There's nothing quite like awesome god rays shining down on your objects. And it's actually surprisingly easy to set up. You just need to understand a few settings, particularly in your lights. So that's precisely what we're doing in this tutorial. Okay, so let's create some serious god rays. I'll start by hiding the default cube because we'll use that a bit later. I'll press Shift A to add, mesh, and then plane. So this is going to be our floor. I'll scale that up nice and big with S. Shift A to add, mesh, and then monkey. I'll zoom in a touch and press Control 2. That adds a subdivision surface modifier with two levels, so it smooths it out nicely. I'll press right click and shade smooth, so it looks nice and smooth as well. Into side view with three on my numpad, and let's line that up so it's sitting on the floor somewhere around about there. Okay, so we've got a monkey on a floor. We've also got this cube ready for the volume. So I'll select that cube. Let's go to front view and make it nice and big. So somewhere around here, and I'll move it so it's close to the floor like this. It doesn't actually have to be above the floor, and it can help to slightly overlap. Then you don't get a gap or anything like that. So at the moment, we can't see anything in this cube. So we'll jump across to the shading workspace so we can set this up. I'll just get rid of my really weird folders and the image editor at the side here. So we've just got the 3D viewport and the materials. So with this cube, we want to give it a volume shader rather than a surface shader. So we delete the principal shader, shift A to add, and under shader, we've got volume scatter. You can actually use the principal volume as well, but the volume scatter is just nice and easy. So we'll bring that to the front there. I'll zoom in a bit, plug that into the volume, and you'll see that we get some volume here. It's a bit too dense, so we'll change the density down to 0.1. And we can now see our scene with some light volume in, ready to figure out our lighting. If you can't see this, then it may be that you've accidentally plugged it into the surface. Make sure the volume is into the volume. Okay, so let's go across to rendered view and we can see our light in the scene there. And I'll just jump across to the render properties. Currently we're in Eevee. I'm going to start off with cycles, but you can do this in Eevee as well. It just looks much better in cycles. Change the device to the GPU so I can use my GPU and turn the denoise on. I'll make sure that's turned on to optics as well. That will run a bit faster. Okay, so now let's select the light. You'll probably have to select it in the outliner because when you try and select things, the cube's in the way, so it's a bit awkward. So make sure you select the light in the outliner like this and go to the lighting properties here. I'll zoom in a touch. And this effect works with the point light, the spotlight, and the area light. The best one in my opinion though is the area light because it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on. So you want your power nice and bright. So I've got it on 1000 at the moment. And the key attribute is the spread. Let's bring that right down to something lower than 10 degrees. And you can see we've got this nice spotlight and you can probably see now how we get the God rays. We probably want to scale our light up a little bit and in fact, rotate it into position slightly. So R then Z. So it's coming forwards like this. And already we're starting to look quite nice. Obviously give it a nice cooler tinge like this because it looks cool. All we need now is to put something in front of the light so that it shines through. I'll quickly go back to layout mode so you can see what I'm doing a little bit more easily. Shift right click to move my 3D cursor, Shift A to add, mesh, and then plane. I'll isolate that with forward slash on my numpad. That's under view, and then it's called local view. So that will just show you what you've got selected. I'll go into edit mode with tab, so that's edit mode up here. Right click and subdivide. And down in the dialog box here, I'll change this to 50. So I've got lots of faces now. I'll make sure I'm in face mode and Alt A to deselect all. What I want to do is select random faces and delete them so I've got holes in my mesh. You can do that by going to the selection menu here, select random. You've got a ratio option here and you can bring that right down. I think sort of big blobs works best. So I'm going to bring it right down to here and then actually press control plus. That will grow my selection, but it will get me sort of blobs like this. You can actually just box select areas as well to get something similar to this if you want. And then I can press delete faces and I've got a holy plane. Back into object mode with tab, out of local view or isolation mode as I call it with forward slash on my numpad. And then we want to move this into position. It's always a little bit awkward with the cube in the way. So I'll go across to render view and move it into position. I'll start with front view, rotate it, move it in front of my light, scale it up just a touch, and then side view, G then Y, move it across like so. And instantly you'll be able to see we've got our God rays. 
Now, if I go to the light again and to the light settings, again, the only thing you really have to change is the spread. The lower this is, the more intense those God rays are. This looks a little bit over the top, I would say. So I'd probably bring this up to minimum one degree. You can change the effect by clicking on your plane. These are often called flags when they're put in front of lights and you can scale that up and down to obviously change the size of the God rays. And you can play around with the light settings, probably a little bit more blend there, giving it a smoother look just there and changing the size. And that looks great. Incidentally, it doesn't have to be an object with holes in. You can actually use a texture that has an alpha channel on it that's see-through. So the main thing is this spread option. That's what's making our light more hard or less soft as it's known. So the beams are much more direct. If we go to the point light, you can see that spreads out from the light, but at the moment it's fairly soft. So you need to change the radius of the point light. That's the size of the light. So 0 0.01, and you'll see it makes those beams much harder. You do tend to have to put the power up with a point light as well. And you can see that effect there. And then the spotlight is similar to a point light in that sense that you have to turn the power up and the radius is all important. But I'll go back to the area light and turn it down a bit because I prefer that. Now, what's this like in Eevee? Well, if we go across to the render settings, change across to Eevee, it is a little bit weird. It's a couple of things we can do. Obviously turn ray tracing on, it just gives a better look. We can turn the samples up a bit, but you have to be a bit aware of your computer's capabilities. But the main thing is if we go down to volumes, we need to change the resolution here to something like one to two. And you can see that's giving a much better resolution. If we go back to where we were with one sixteenth, it's all soft. And you can see as I bring this down, it gets sharper and sharper. And I think one to two is probably better. The only problem with this is the direction of these beams. They still kind of act a bit more like a point light than an area light, but you can bring the area light away from your flag object and it does act a little bit more like we see in cycles. But for me, I'd much prefer to use cycles. Look at that. Oh yes. To get it to be animated, all you need to do is animate the object that's in front of the light, the one with the holes in. So hopefully now you have a godly understanding of God rays. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.